There has been a lot of interesting talk about the 16-inch MacBook Pro. For me, I've been using the same computer for the past six years. So why is this the one that made me want to upgrade? This is my 13-inch 2013 MacBook Pro, and it's the best computer I've ever used. It's been my main computer for almost six years now, and I've used it on all of my personal and professional work in that time, building two high school digital media pathways, editing photos, creating designs, producing client work, and editing the more than 150 videos for this YouTube channel. So I absolutely love this computer. And if I love it so much, why on earth would I wanna upgrade? The new 16-inch MacBook Pro offers a pretty massive step up in terms of power, and as much as I love the 13-inch form factor, the larger display makes editing and multitasking so much easier. I ended up going with the base model of the higher-end MacBook Pro, if that makes sense. So it's got an i9 processor, a dedicated GPU with four gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of system RAM, and a one terabyte hard drive. I'm not really a gamer, so I mostly use my computer for video editing with Final Cut Pro and photo design work with Adobe Creative Cloud. And I also use it to run my high school digital media pathway, and that involves giving a lot of lessons and presentations and workshops, and it has to drive all of that. So. Let's take a look at some of this computer's key traits. The 16-inch MacBook Pro is physically larger than the previous 15-inch version, but since I'm coming from a six-year-old 13-inch computer, I don't really have a frame of reference for that. What I can say is that it's much smaller and lighter than the 15-inch MacBook Pro that I had back in 2010. And I know that's ancient history, but in terms of size, this 16-inch MacBook Pro is way more manageable and easier to use than that older one was. And the biggest issue for me when it comes to size is whether or not the computer is gonna be easily transportable. My daily bag is this Tenba DNA 13. It's built like a tank. I've had it for years and it's like, it's basically the perfect bag. But since this computer's bigger, I did have to finally update that too to a slightly larger version that can accommodate the 15 inch computer. But beyond that, the 16 inch MacBook Pro fits totally fine into my regular backpack and my photo backpack. So let's jump in and talk about the display. There's not a lot I can say that hasn't already been said. It's big, it's bright, it's beautiful. And coming from a 13 inch screen, what I can say is this relieves a lot of stress and eye strain that I didn't even realize I was experiencing while working. The display is not quite as bright as I would have expected it to be. It's actually pretty much the same as my 13 inch computer, which is fine. I guess if it were any brighter, it would like burn my retinas out. And I don't think that that's what Apple means when they call it a retina display. So moving on from the display, I do wanna to touch on Touch ID for a second, which isn't a new feature if you've been using any of the MacBook Pros with touch bars over the past few years. But for a newcomer like me, it's pretty awesome. I think it's kind of underrated. With Mac OS adding more and more security measures with each release, it seems like I'm entering my password more and more frequently. And that doesn't even take into account all of the different apps and websites that have their own accounts and logins. And being able to just quickly enter my password with a half second touch of my finger is just flat out amazing. I love everything about having Touch ID on a computer. And it really is super fast. It seems like as soon as I touch it, it IDs me and registers my fingerprint. And Touch ID moves us right into the newly redesigned keyboard, and this is really what clinched the upgrade decision for me. I love the scissor mechanism of the keyboard on my 2013 inch MacBook, and I've just been waiting for a long time to see if Apple would come up with a new design since I wasn't personally a huge fan of the butterfly keyboard. And this is basically the perfect keyboard. It's really similar to the old keyboard on my older MacBook, but it's a little bit different. It's a little new, updated. The keys don't quite have as much travel, but it really feels great and it's just a joy to use. And this computer is full of things like that, these small features that make it a joy to use. And all of those details on their own might not mean much, but when they come together, they create something that I think is really extraordinary. And speaking of extraordinary, Apple has made some pretty extraordinary claims about the battery life on this computer. 
According to Apple, the new MacBook Pro, the 16 inch one, boasts an 11 hour battery life. Through my experience so far while using Photoshop or Final Cut, the battery life seems okay. Part of me feels like it drains faster than I'd like it to, but that could just be the result of it being a way more powerful computer with a bigger display than I'm used to. I don't know if I would really get 11 hours of it, but you know, there's a lot of power in this computer, which does also mean that it gets noticeably warm. It doesn't really get loud. It doesn't get so hot that you're worried or concerned, but it is noticeably warmer than my 13 inch computer ever got. But again, it makes sense because there's so much more power in here than there was in the old computer. If we're gonna talk about battery life, it only makes sense to go next into dongle life. And more than three years after the USB-C only MacBook Pros were introduced, dongles are still very much a thing. And I really do miss the SD card slot on my old MacBook and MagSafe, the magnetic charger, was pretty much one of the greatest ideas ever that has saved me on many, many occasions. So I do miss those things, but realistically, it's not hard to find a USB-C cable for most of your accessories and your peripherals. Lots of things just come USB-C compatible now. And when you do need something that's not USB-C, a simple adapter like this one from Satechi, Satechi can kind of fill in whatever's missing. It adds an SD card slot, USB-A, HDMI out, all those little things that are missing. I haven't really found the dongle life to be a huge inconvenience so far, and I think it's only gonna get better and better as time goes on. So despite the occasional inconvenience, I think that the versatility of USB-C is pretty awesome. The fact that every port can also be a charger and I can find an external display that can charge my computer with a single cable for the display and the charging is kind of mind blowing. And when it comes to transferring large video and photo files, which I do like every single day, the added speed of USB-C is a huge bonus. It makes those large data transfers so much more quick and easy. My thoughts on the overall performance of this computer, and this might be a sin to say in the tech world, but I don't really care about benchmark performance. I care about how the computer handles the work and functions every day when it's doing the things that I need it to do. And this has always been, I think, one of Apple's biggest strengths. Since the hardware and the software are so tightly integrated, you get this performance that you might not necessarily expect based purely on the specs alone. And as a side note, I did used to do a lot of live streams on this channel, but my 13 inch MacBook just couldn't handle them. And so I stopped in order to like save my sanity. But the added power of this computer opens up creative options like that, like live streaming that just weren't possible for me before. So I appreciate that extra power and performance now. And I think going forward into the future, as more and more of those little doorways open, I'll appreciate it even more. So in conclusion, I think that this is an amazing computer. If you're like me and you've been sitting with a computer that's several years old or a couple generations old, the leap is gonna be absolutely insane. And I think you'll love it. And even though I do think that this new MacBook Pro is great, it is still expensive. And I, I think that it's really important when you upgrade a computer to upgrade with practicality in mind. So my main point with saying how much I love my 13 inch 2013 model was to really illustrate how long these MacBooks can last. And that really is part of their value and part of the draw to them. For some of us, I think upgrades are a fun way to just sort of stay on top of the world of tech. But for others, especially those concerned with budget like me, you can get a lot of mileage out of these machines. And I think that it's accurate to say that I use my computer more heavily than the average user with all the video and design work and educational work that I do with it. And I've been totally fine doing all of that on a six year old machine up until now. So knowing how long I plan to keep this computer is also a reason that I did wanna wait until Apple released the version that was perfect for me and my needs. Realistically, you don't need the latest and greatest tech to do great work, but if you are like me, again, in that position where you're ready to upgrade, this 16 inch MacBook Pro is an awesome choice. It effectively combines the best of both worlds when compared to the previous two physical design generations. And I think it's tough to quantify like joy of use with a piece of tech, 
there are a lot of things that play into that, just your overall, the vibe that you get from it. But this computer really is like genuinely a joy to use. And if I can feel that every time I sit down to work with it over the next however many years, then I think that this is definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Was it, why did I close it? I don't know. It's a great computer. I like it. If you need a computer, you should buy this computer. <laughs> That's my review.